Hi, folks. Welcome to another episode of Film Study. This is Ken McCusick. We have a great short for you today with Mark Horton. Now, he's been on the show before, and if you haven't listened to these episodes in the past, they are worth going back to and try and find. One on front office economics and another on running back contracts and some of the ways they fit into the CBA, meaning they don't. They're a square peg within a round hole. But Mark has been a great guest on the show before. He came to me with a new topic. Uh, which is a little bit lighter, I think, <laughs> than some of these heavy <laughs> economics topics. This is, uh, should Lamar Jackson be running more in the playoffs? Uh, do we look at the uh, at breaking the paradigm of uh, Lamar, the risk is too great to Lamar during the regular season? But Mark, real glad to have you again. How are you doing? Great. How are you? I, I got no complaints. It's the happiest of New Year's is in, in Ravens land. Yep. The only bad thing is I was about to go to the Steelers game and then the circumstances conspired against me. But other than that, I'm doing great. You know, not that terrible a game to miss if you're a Ravens <laughs> fan. I think Maureen is already asking, can we live early if, if it's bad weather in the second half? And I kind of grumble at that. But uh, <laughs> but the, anyways, it's uh, it, it'll be, you know, one of the games the Ravens are, are more likely to lose than any other this year. Yep. All right. So. The, the, the topic today is is an interesting one because Lamar certainly has been used more sparingly as a runner this year. Fewer designed runs. Some of that may be a case of he's getting a little more mature as a, as a player, probably is a little less fast than he was when he first came into the league. And some of it is that Ravens do not want the same sort of risk that they've taken with Lamar and had him miss the end of each of the last three seasons. Yep, exactly. Um, so I think the the way I think about this is the Greg Roman system, uh, especially in 2019, was one of the most potent offensive systems the NFL's ever seen. And it relied heavily on the QB run. But the biggest issue was sustainability, um, in my opinion, where uh, one of the big sustainability issues was injury risk. In my opinion, I know it's somewhat controversial since Lamar's been injured in the pocket quite a few times. But the other was... Uh, the playmakers and how they felt they were fitting into the offense. So we had controversy after controversy and trade requests and all of these things. Um, So I've been a big fan of the Todd Munkin evolution of the offense, which although it still used the Lamar run and certainly used Lamar's ability to extend plays and playmaking, uh, it was much more diversified in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, But then my question is, if we get away from the sustainability angle and we just focus on efficiency, um, should we expect Lamar to start running more over the playoffs? So uh, to add some to this, um, this offense has gotten better at a huge number of things uh, over this past year. I think Lamar's been doing some of his most impressive work as a passer. I think the wide receiver play has been better than it's been in years. The offensive line stayed relatively healthy. Um, So at this current iteration of the offense, is its actual most efficient version as we get away from worrying about sustainability? Does that include Lamar running more? Or are we already around the most efficient version of this offense? Uh, Um, That's a great question. Now, I, I will say this. As efficient as this offense has been, remarkably, they're not really at the top of the NFL in that category. And in terms of drive, uh, sorry, points per drive, the 49ers have a big edge on them. The 49ers have scored 2.91 points per drive. The Ravens only 2.57 are actually fourth behind San Francisco, Dallas, and Miami. That was the thing that really made that 2019 Ravens offense special. And it's the basis of the AV statistic that you see in pro football reference is uh, you know, points per drive difference from the rest of the league, the value of that is divided out amongst the players on each side of the ball. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and I don't think it's just fair to compare 2019 Ravens to um, 2023 Ravens. It's a little mm-hmm. bit apples and oranges, partly because the personnel is the same, partly because in 2019, the league had so little time to adjust to that. Um, so I, I wouldn't say that if we just went to 2019 Greg Roman scheme that we should expect that kind of offensive efficiency now. 
But I guess the question is, if you sprinkled more QB run into the game, uh, do you actually expect more efficiency yeah. at this point? And we, the playoffs are this time, especially uh, God willing, as you get later into the playoffs, that you care less about sustainability and more about raw efficiency. Every game, single elimination, you're trying to make a Super Bowl run. You're doing whatever it takes to win. So um, what you said there is very, very, very cogent, right? I think right, right there is that each additional game, you are willing to risk more. In mm-hmm. terms of of winning it, obviously your 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 willingness to risk an injury to Lamar in the in the divisional game should be less than it is in the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. and it, it just should, it sh- should be obvious to people. But I don't know that it is necessarily obvious. In either case, we don't want to see Lamar get hurt for the beginning of next year. But the, but the flags fly forever, and that's what the the everybody who wants to go all in every single year will 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 start with in terms of telling you. And uh, it, it uh, I think it does make more sense when you're actually in playing in the Super Bowl that you take more risks. Yeah. So first, I want to just talk about some low hanging fruit of how I think this offense will change with a little bit more risk. One is Lamar's been doing a great job protecting himself um, this year as compared to previous years. He's getting out of bounds more. He's sliding more. And I think in a lot of those opportunities, he had a chance to juke someone or put his shoulder down and get a few extra yards, and he wisely hasn't taken it. I would expect him to take those risks uh, more as we go throughout the playoffs, and our risk tolerance increases. Um, I think the other obvious situations where Lamar would be a bigger part of the run game is if we're closing out games with a lead, especially if it's like a seven-point lead where you would really love to run clock off, Um, but it's not just trivial where if you're up 21 points in the fourth quarter, who cares? Just run your running back. If you punt a few times, it doesn't matter. Um, another one is if you have a really bad run defense you're facing that you can exploit and especially relative to the quality of their pass defense. And third is if you have really bad weather football. So I just want to say off the bat, I think those are all cases where we should expect to see Lamar run more than we would have in the regular season. Yeah, I, I, to address your original overarching point, the the Ravens is it is it is this is this offense so optimal that they can't benefit from Lamar Jackson running more than he is right now or having the option to do that? I can't imagine that that's true. I think that mm-hmm. they certainly would benefit from having Lamar the option to run Lamar more. And I think you outlined some good places there, whether it's bad weather or whether it's um, protecting a lead, whatever. They've already done a fair amount of that, by the way. They're, where they're willing to, to risk Lamar to try and win football games you know, by getting that key first down. I think we've seen some of that already. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, and I mean, that kind of gets at an important point. It's not a yes or no question. The offense certainly isn't perfectly optimal now. Um, and there will probably be some change. I guess my question is, how drastic is the change, mm-hmm. especially early in football games? Um, is this really play action, running back, run game, occasional design Lamar run? Is that pretty close to the right mix? Or do we think that adding in a more potent Lamar run threat um, will really add value to this offense? And to some of the top offenses you talked about in the league, Um, The 49ers, I think, are the best example of this. They win by having incredibly multiple threats. They have Debo Samuel. They have Brandon Mm Ayuk. They have George Kittle um, and uh, Christian McCaffrey, if I didn't say that. Should have been my first one. Um, Basically, all of those players represent significant value adds in the pass and run game, and that affords a lot of uh, disguise. And we have some of those elements but I think Lamar's actually the biggest one. The thing that's always made our offense the most multiple is Lamar's ability to run or pass in any given situation. Or threaten the run. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the great lost value of Lamar Jackson in the MVP thing. Any Buffalo fan wants to provide passing statistics for uh, Josh Allen and say, look, these yardage, these TDs, these are more, but well, that doesn't account for all the other things. And, uh, you know, Buffalo is nowhere near the top of the stack. Actually, they're probably near the top. Where are they? Yeah, they're really right after Baltimore at 2.52 points per drive. But right there is 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 one of the points that's in Lamar Jackson's favor is that I don't think the skill position players in Baltimore are any better uh, than they are in Buffalo. And, and that may be even generous. 
and yet they're very close in terms of of uh, points per drive. What I gathered from uh, about Buffalo from I think a Brett Coleman video is they're one of the best teams between the twenties, which really helps their EPA stats. But mm -hmm. they've really struggled turning that into points in the red zone. They haven't been good. I'll look that up. While yeah, we're so they're. About. Um, at least around the midpoint of this season, they weren't. So they're a pretty strange uh, statistical team where different advanced metrics will make different arguments about what they are. Um, but I, I completely agree with you. I think QB uh, run rushing yards should be treated as more valuable than QB passing yards because they add an extra dimensionality to your offense. They massively increase the efficiency of your running backs. Um, similarly, you know, if I wanted to argue uh, the Christian McCaffrey MVP case, I think running back passing yards are more valuable than running back rushing yards because dimension. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, that's a great, that's don't. a great point. <laughs> By the way, that's a, that's a great point with, with Lamar in general, that his, his rushing yards aren't just valuable as rushing yards themselves. They're a proxy for how much the defense is, having to be aware of his um, dangerousness and allowing other matchups to be more favorable because of it. Yep. So I think that kind of spells out the case for why having Lamar run the ball might be preferable. Um, but now let's get to some of the downsides that might not be as obvious. Um, so one is that generally, in my opinion, you can correct me if you can think of counterexamples, Lamar's best passing games, even in terms of efficiency, I think have been games where he's not been running as much. And I suspect there's a wear and tear component within a game to that. You know, mm -hmm. you're running the ball a lot. You're exhausting yourself. You're taking hits. Um, I think all of that probably makes it harder to get into rhythm as a passer. Um what do you think about that hypothesis? Do you give any weight to that? I, notionally, I could I could buy it. I I'd want to look at the actual data points and see if that if it matches up. But going back to it, I don't think he had a particularly big running game in his first fifty nine to ten win at Miami mm -hmm. in that year. I'm trying to think if if in his one other one fifty eights or against the Colts in twenty one or against uh, the the this year's game against the. Who, who, who did he just have the huge pass rating? Miami, he just had Miami. the huge pass rating again. And did he have another one earlier this season that was up there? But I'm, I'm trying to think of when he's really had, whether he's had great rushing games in these games where he's had great passing games. Uh, certainly the Lions, I think, would be up yeah. there. And in all of these, you know, he's Lamar. He's always going to get some scramble yards. And I think a common link is the offensive line tends to do a great job protecting in those games where Lamar really goes mm -hmm. crazy. Um, so that tends to lend itself to some scramble lanes. But in all of those games you've listed, um, other than maybe the Rams in 2019, but only because I don't remember it that well, um, I think generally Lamar has not been used as much in the design run game. Um, and then on the other side of that, uh, there may be a rhythm component to the playmakers too, where the more they get the ball in their hands, the more they get opportunities, the more efficiency you should expect out of them. I, I I would I generally agree that a spread football where the defense just doesn't know how to play can be exhausting. It can be certainly can be exhausting to the pass rush itself to to have to go forty times a game or forty five times a game instead of twenty six against the Ravens. But when we're looking at the greatest passing games Lamar has ever had, they're all fairly few numbers of total passes. They're, sure. they're, they're, you know, 24, 25. And that's the nature of all the 158.3s are, are a small number of passes. Yeah. And it's also the nature of the Ravens having the dominant run game they've had over recent years. Um, there's just in the Ravens most pass heavy game, they're not going to be as pass heavy as a team like the Dolphins, let's say, because they can add so much value in the run game. And because as teams go towards lighter boxes and safety rotations and all these things you want to do to compensate against the past, it opens up opportunities to run. Mm -hmm. um, so now I kind of want to break this down into two categories. So uh, scrambling to run and design runs, because I okay. think these should be treated as somewhat independently. Um, so right now, I think the paradigm is much more about running the ball and play action passing. Um, 
and not so much about the Lamar designed run. Again, it's an important threat. Teams have to account for it to some extent, but more often than not, Lamar's pulling the run, uh, pulling the ball to pass rather than to run right now. Um, so that is one area where do you think we're adding efficiency to our offense by having Lamar run more in those situations? Um, okay, I'm sorry. I, specifically, you're asking about, about mesh point plays that are, that are RPOs or are not RPOs. That well, are, I guess are, that's my r- question. Right now, we're doing a lot of uh, running back uh, run RPOs. And mm-hmm. my question is, should more of these be effectively the run-run options we've right. seen in the past? Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's a great point. Um, so they, they are they do do more going to the mesh point and then coming out of it to throw now than they ever did before. They only did that three times in all of 2019. Um, that 2019 offense was very different because it was run out of pistol and made Lamar the edge threat, mm-hmm. which is another thing that I think is worth discussing here when you're talking about additional Lamar runs. Would you change it? I mean, they've had they've had all this sidecar on tape the entire season, basically, and relatively limited amount of pistol. Would you yep. change it and go to more pistol and try and make Lamar the edge threat if you want to run him more and and also take a little less risk with him? Yeah, I. This is one where I don't completely know what Munkin's vision of Lamar as a runner is. You know, if you really wanted to use Lamar heavily as a runner, would you go back to pistol or do you have a sidecar package? Um, where you feel like Lamar's adding value as a runner. So that's a little bit over my head. I don't have a great intuition for that. Just trying to look at, at Lamar's total scrambles and design runs here. So I've got 63 scrambles for 421 on the year. Mm-hmm. And he has an 821 of total yardage on 85 attempts. Is that correct? So as a designed runner, I thought he was sitting around 760 for rushing yards this year. I've got I, I'm, sitting, I'm looking at 885 for 821. That may be wrong. It's on, okay. It's I might have looked at it before the Dolphins game, so that yeah. might be correct. So he's, he's only got 22 designed runs for the whole year, if that's true. Mm-hmm. Um, which is not many. Let me see if I can confirm that that 80 that 85 total number because I think that's probably going to be true. Uh, would be my guess. PFF's good, and they won't. I missed something like this. Um, While you're looking that up, um, one thing about the sidecar versus pistol distinction, let me know if I'm wrong about this, but I think of sidecars being a little bit more of an outside zone friendly alignment. And I think that partly goes with the shift the Ravens offensive line has had away from all the elephants of 2019 to guys like Tyler Linderbaum who make uh, Mm -hmm. outside zone, pin and pull, all of those things a bit more of an efficient part of the run game. So uh, I guess the question is, in that more outside run-heavy scheme, does Lamar pulling it and running out the other way uh, still as, add as much value as it did with the pistol power uh, inside zone scheme that Greg Roman was running? I, I no, no team is entirely one or the other, by the way. So you, you sure. run some plays of, of each type. Um, I would generally agree sidecar is more friendly to zone schemes um, and, and – uh, uh, you know, it, it, it certainly makes sense um, when, when Lamar is pulling in those situation, he's essentially trying to to find weaknesses in the middle of the defense that is fl- that he hopes will be flowing in the wrong direction or away from from his run in the middle. Mm-hmm. So um, I, did, does that did, did I cover what you want to cover there or is there something else? I guess my question is, do you think that. Um, in terms of sidecar versus pistol, um, Lamar's value as a runner is uh, much more potent in pistol rather than sidecar. Or do you think it just looks a little different in both cases? I think I think probably looks a little different. It hasn't been all that much different. If you look at 22 in particular, 6.8 yards per carry versus 6.9, 22, a very heavy sidecar year, 19, a very heavy pistol year. They ran about 46% pistol, if I recall correctly, in 2019. And I don't remember what their pistol percentage was. It was way down, and the sidecar was way up in terms of 2022. He's always been within a fairly narrow band, even in 2018, where he was doing a lot of, I'm just running it no matter what stuff. Uh, he was at 4.7 yards per carry. Every other year of his career, he's between been between 5.5 and 6.9. So I think mm-hmm. they've, they've gotten value pretty much whatever scheme they've they've used. 
Um, I did want to go back to this for a second. I had the number, the 85 number is the number of design runs for the year. He has 148 total runs for 821. So it's okay. 85 and 63 scrambles, 85 design, 63 scrambles. So he's, he's been used for just about five scrambles, five design runs per game so far this year. Gotcha. Um, okay. So to get back to this kind of pistol versus sidecar thing, my preference would be don't try to overhaul the scheme to accommodate the 2019 version of Lamar as a runner. Um, because I, I think there's a little bit of, if it's don't broke, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Um, if the scheme's working so well, the way I would want to use Lamar as a runner is more within the scheme than changing up the whole scheme for the playoffs. But mm -hmm. that's just my view. I, I think that's reasonable if if you uh, I, first of all, I, so I'm basically agreeing with you. But if I were to take the devil's advocate position in here, I'd say as great as this offense has been, it hasn't been the 2019 offense as much advantages as they've had from Lamar being a pocket passer. It's not the 2019 offense as great as Greg Roman is. And a lot of people think Greg Roman is the greatest thing since sliced bread and, and um, sorry, not Greg Roman, uh, uh, Monken is uh, the greatest thing since sliced bread and, and Greg Roman is dog shit. Um, that couldn't be more wrong in terms of, of, uh, of what's true. Now the offensive line in 2019 was better. The skill position players were a hell of a lot worse. Mm -hmm. And I think we can agree at least on that much. The question of where was Lamar more valuable in terms of scheme? Well, Lamar had one of the greatest years in the history of the National Football League in 2019. He's not a better player today than he was then by any measure you'd like to make that's reasonable, I would say. Now, it was new to the league. What what he did was, you know, it was, it was something that the league, for whatever reason, did not expect. It was something the offensive line and, and the Ravens' tight end situation was very able to accommodate and, and, and make successful. But if I were to if if I were to say there's I, I can't with a straight face say there is no improvement possible for this offense. I can't do that. They're, sure. they're, they're not as good as the 2019 offense would be the place I'd start. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that Greg Roman, what he did here was massively impressive. What he did at San Francisco was massively impressive. I think the biggest issue is sustainability and mm -hmm. uh the potency of that system. And the player satisfaction's kind of gone down year over year wherever he's been, um, which isn't everything, but it is important. So I think where Monken's really impressed me is keeping a high level of offensive potency while having something much more sustainable um, where Lamar's taking less hits, where the players seem to be happier. So yeah. I am certainly a fan of uh, Monken, but yeah, I think that the contributions that Greg Roman had to the Ravens specifically, and also the way uh, running quarterbacks can be used in the NFL in general is probably underappreciated because yeah. we have too much jadedness as fans. And, and, and it's just, it's the jadedness is a function of how great that 2019 team was and the relative trajectory from there. It wasn't sustainable in a lot of ways. It wasn't sustainable, certainly with injuries. Um, you know, in, in terms of what did happen, but, but it also wasn't sustainable period because Lamar Jackson had one of the greatest years ever. And we expected he's only going to get better from here because look, he's 22. That was crap. We should, we should have realized that was a bunch of crap at the time that, that of course he's going to get worse because no one's ever been this good is, is the, is the basic thing. And every other team, the, there's a, there's a, a general philosophy in sports that the balance of strategies favor the trailing team. And by the way, that's a good thing for sports in general being exciting as a product is that they want the trailing team to have a chance to come back in games. Well, mm -hmm. anyway, the balance of strategies favors teams trying to regress to being more even than they are right now. And, and that's it's it's just generally true uh, when you're trying to negate the greatness even of a single player at, within a single offense, which was what teams were able to do after 2019. So I, I'm, I, I think we should have predicted that it was going to happen. And I do think also, by the way, and Mark, tell me what you think about this, that 50 years from now or 30 years from now, when people look back at this and, and presuming that Ravens offense is still historic um, in, in terms of relativity, the, the, the game will have changed some, but in terms of relative to the league average, hey, this offense at 3.08 points per drive relative to the rest of the offense in the league is just 165% of what the league did and is truly remarkable. 
I think people can look back at Greg Roman and say, look at what he brought to this team. He had it at this level for one year. It dropped a little bit, you know, in, in consecutive years. And then Lamar Jackson got hurt and they're going to blame most of it on that. But I think the thought is going to be, if people are looking at it, that Greg Roman was the greatest offensive coordinator in team history. I think that. If you found a hundred dollar bill on the ground, you wouldn't walk past it. So don't pass up a chance at easy cash with my bookie. My bookie has the biggest online selection of odds and contests to fill all your sports betting needs anytime, anywhere, so you can turn that sports knowledge into cash in your wallet. Bet on the NFL, college bowl games, or play for your share of big cash prizes in the weekly blackjack tournaments. And if you've been waiting for the right time to get in on the action, that time is now. Make your winning move today. Sign up at MyBookie and use the promo code RAVENS to claim your deposit match. Redeemable up to $1,000. Again, that's promo code RAVENS to claim your bonus. Experience the thrill of sports betting right from the comfort of your home. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. That's interesting. I think Todd Munkin has a real chance to swing that perception one way or the other. Sure. If this offense keeps building year over year and reaches peaks similar to Greg Roman, I think it's going to really hurt the perception of Greg Roman, maybe even unfairly. 100% um, agree, by the way, with that. But you that's the biggest if of all. If Monken can go from where he is now at a very, very high level to two or three levels above that to get to the, to the, to the 2019 Ravens offense level, then you'd have to give it to him because he started at a, at a, high, at a high level and he's moved to, to, the, to the 2019 level. Or I would say even keep this level for four or five years. Um, But I think that the legacy I really hope we see of Greg Roman in uh, 50 years, let's say, is looking back at Justin Fields, Anthony Richardson, all the guys who haven't come out yet, and seeing that they have more of a place and a way to enter the league um, Mm -hmm. and that they can develop into great quarterbacks in a way that it was so hard for a guy like Michael Vick to do because that infrastructure has been built and people have seen it in Baltimore and know what it might look like. That's a great point. So Lamar Jackson is the first of this generation of what might be in 50 years, eight other Hall of Fame quarterbacks who are of similar um, style. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I don't think anyone uh, can quite do – things similar to Lamar in the limit. I think um, that the kind of just insane ankle breaking is something we might not see again in our lifetimes, but there are QBs who can really bring something substantial to the running game. And I hope that they have more of a place in the NFL now. And, you know, don't go through uh, the draft fall that Lamar went through, for example, um, and have teams really invested in building around them the right way. So this is an interesting point because I, I definitely want Lamar to be this unique player in Ravens history. I'm much more invested in that notion of Ed Reed, of Ray Lewis, of being the, just unique at their positions in terms of the history of the NFL than I am in the coordinators that helped them excel, becoming recognized for what they did. So I'm, I'm way more invested in Lamar personally, obviously that I am in, in what Greg Roman's legacy is 50 years down the road. Sure. I, I do feel some investment as a Lamar fan in the legacy of other quarterbacks in this league who I can, who can run because okay. I think they've gotten such a raw deal over time. And to me, like Greg Roman might be a part of that story, but what I really want is for, I, I love watching this kind of QB for more of these QBs to be in the league and doing well and an evolution of football in that direction. But you, wouldn't you also not want as long as we keep winning Super Bowls, <laughs> as long as we keep winning Super Bowls and as long as nobody's ever more than about 85 percent of Lamar Jackson. So sure. I, it's a, you know, he has to eat if he's not the greatest player at the position of the type, yada, yada, um, uh, that will be a, a, a loss for Ravens fans. Absolutely. There's a little bit of a pit in my stomach last year yeah. when people started saying, oh, is Justin Fields actually the greatest runner at the QB position right now? It's like, OK, that might be a little bit too far. <laughs> but yeah all right all right mark outstanding are we, we good to go here Anything uh one more, more thing sure. uh one of the biggest changes i've seen in lamar's game is when he breaks the pocket more than ever he's staying behind the line of scrimmage he's keeping his eyes downfield 
Um, do you think that's a concession to safety right now? Or do you think that that's actually the most efficient version of the scramble to pass Lamar? Like, he, okay. it seems like he's made some of his most impressive plays there, but it's kind of hard to say if he'd taken off in, let's say, 20% more of those plays, uh, would that have resulted in added efficiency? Okay, so let, let, me, let me start from a, from a very slightly different angle. He, he breaks the pocket way less than he did in 2019, way less, because they had many more designed rollouts in that year. They did more booting. Um, he stays in the pocket longer. He breaks it later. And what the, the effect of that that I've seen is that the extended plays are as effective as they've ever been, more effective than they've ever been this year, because um, he's able to use more of the field in so doing. It's because it's often before he leaves the pocket or just after he leaves the pocket that he's making his throw. If you roll to one side, you basically take away a substantial portion of the field from those longer throws to the opposite side of the field that you can no longer make. Um, so it's, it's kind of my old thing about, you know, it's, it's death to a right-handed running back to roll left. That really restrains the field tremendous. It's, it's, it, you also, as a right-handed quarterback, don't want to roll right because it limits the field in certain ways. Lamar's not doing that nearly as much. And those extended plays are having more options in them than they ever had before. And that's been some of the beauty of seeing Aguilar and other players like that, um, making these extended plays work. Um, and, and they've been able to do that despite the fact that their tackle play has not been good this year. Um, and and it, it's been good. Moses has been good. Stanley has not been good. Just to, just to be clear about that, the left tackle play has not been good. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, that is something that's really impressed me about what Lamar's doing. In terms of, of um, the, uh, the general designed roles or other things are better or worse than we were before, I really couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you if that's the case or not. Okay. Yeah, I think back to the 2020 playoff game against the Titans where Lamar kept trying to hold the ball to pass. The protection wasn't there. And the way he broke the game open was just uh, going straight downfield for, what, 50 yards for the touchdown. Um, and that's very different than the style it feels like Lamar is playing now. He's he's scrambling horizontally so much more than he's scrambling, uh, than scrambling vertically like he used to. So I'm curious to see if uh, there's a little bit more just take off and get forward in the playoffs, but I really don't know. It's it's kind of hard to nitpick um, the way Lamar scrambled this year when it's resulted in so many positive plays. Right. Yeah, it's been it, it has definitely been a lot of fun to watch this team. They've they've um I think they've done – one of the reasons the points per drive is down a little bit this year is that they're not as aggressive on fourth down, and they're not as aggressive on fourth down because they are probably taking an approach where they don't want to add variance to games where they're the better team. And that yeah. wasn't clear for as long of 2019 as it has been in 2023. They've been the better team all year long this year. The only couple of games, Miami and San Francisco – where they weren't necessarily the better team have come just, just in, in recent times. And I'm not scared about like what team like was winning the game or anything like that. I'm talking about which team is really the, the, the stronger of the two sides on the field on that day. And, uh, you know, do you want to pack, do you want to increase your, your risk into a relatively smaller number of plays or spread it out over the entire games? So anyway, that's, I think some of that, they've gone forward a lot less on fourth down this year. And that's been part of the reason their points per dri driver down a little bit. Sure. And I just want to add one more little thing on top of this discussion. Um, we talk about Lamar. You you kind of hit on this earlier. 2019 Lamar was a different runner than 2023 Lamar. And both of them, I think, are on an efficient frontier. But he's moved more towards a bigger player who's harder to tackle and lost a little bit of the speed and agility. Mm -hmm. Now, he can still shake people all the time, but it's not quite that 2019 level of ankle breaking. So one of the things is, even if Lamar's a really efficient runner uh, right now, it he's probably doing it by incurring more contact than he would in uh, 2019. Like 2019, Lamar might have been a more sustainable runner because he was so rarely taking contact and so often getting to the edge and getting out of bounds. Yeah. Um, but this year, if if he wants to get those yards, it's probably going to be through a little bit more contact. And he's a little bit more equipped to do that now that he is a bit bigger and stronger. You make a good point that it was scheme related really in 2019. And the difference between pistol and sidecar makes Lamar an insider outside threat. So if you're mm -hmm. going to run pistol, 
You can get him back on the outside, get him running out of bounds like he did all year on 2019. Um, if if you want to run sidecar, Lamar's much more dangerous with much more optionality in the middle of the field. Defense makes a mistake. Lamar takes advantage of it. And all the NFC East teams basically got a piece of that in, in, well, in their games. And we even saw the transition between quick outside runner Lamar and stronger inside runner Lamar under Greg Roman when the most effective play um, changed from that really inside zone Lamar options at outside to counter bash where Lamar was going straight up the middle. Right. So, yeah. yeah. All right, Mark, outstanding. Always fun to talk football with you. Great discussion. Your knowledge of the game is, is very good. And you always bring a really thoughtful topic to this. Uh, tell folks where they can talk football with you online. I'm uh, on Twitter. I once again forget my really bad username. That's <laughs> mhor followed by a bunch of trailing numbers. Uh, let me pull it up are, very are you, quick. Mark uh, Hor. <laughs> yeah, capital Mark M, capital H, uh, Hor, three zero five three two six five zero. I don't post much, but my DMs are open and uh, happy to chat with anyone. All right. Other folks out there, if you'd like to be on a film study short and come up with a thoughtful topic or just a topic you're passionate about, we're having one about crowd noise coming up that I think is going to be not only a lot of fun, but a little bit crazy in terms of how mechanically or how systemically crowd noise is most impactful and can be generated at the right times and at, in the right ways. It should be should be a very interesting conversation, I think. Can be anything you're passionate about, though. Hit me up. DMs are always open on Twitter. I'll get back to you very quickly about uh, about doing this episode. And uh, you don't need to have extensive outline or anything like that. A couple of bullet points is usually fine. That's what Mark always gives me when he when he does these shows. And uh, even though he's extremely prepared, um, uh, you you don't need to be as prepared. Uh, I love it. Bringing analytics to crowd noise. It's a yeah, good idea. It'd, be, it'd be fun. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Mark, thanks a lot for coming on. All right. Thanks for having me. And we'll talk to you next time. Go Ravens. See ya.